working. But this is Drumcliff County Sligo. I want to show you something interesting. As, uh, the church is quite interesting because it has a gigantic tower. And not much of a, a doorway. I always found that interesting. Hello. Look at this, there's a service on. There's the, the church tower is actually massive. Now here's what I came to show you here. Oh, see in the distance there? You can, I'll show you, you can see Ben Bulbin in the clouds. This is a uh, this is hardcore old times Lego here. You can't see it today, but that's Ben Bulban over there. At the top is in the clouds. The famous head of Ben Bulban. We still live? Yeah. Okay. Under bare Ben Bulban's head in Drumcliff Churchyard. Yates is lame. And here he is. Here's the grave of William Butler Yeats. Here. And his wife, George, or Georgina Yeats. Now, Georgina was also, along with William Butler Yeats, she was also a, uh, a member of the Golden Dawn. In fact, she was initiated before him. And that poem, Casa Cold Eye on Life and Dead Horsemen Pass By, is from under Ben Bulban. He actually wrote a like an epithet before he died. But she actually she was she she was a uh, she initiated him into the Golden Dawn. Firstly, and then all the trouble began with Crowley. But she was she was a remarkable woman in her own right. I've got her, her there was a biography over that's quite brilliant. I'll show you a few other, are we still alive? Yeah, a few other interesting things. They don't bury many people here anymore because the, the graveyard's full up. My friend Orla over there. Very nice cafe here. They do a lovely soup. I'm going to show you some of the things. You can probably see the round tower coming up. Sorry for the shake. I hurt my leg this morning. I'm not walking right. I also didn't get enough sleep last night from a shitty psychic attack. Now this is a high cross here from the 6th century. Now this is the classic uh, rollover period between between Celtic and between pagan. We still on? Yeah. Between are we? Yeah. Between pagan and Celtic. You can see how badly eroded it is, but you can see the Celtic motifs and what they say are scenes from the Bible. But I don't know how many of them are actually from the Bible. Like a lot of them kind of. I mean. Uh, are these things actually Christian? Christians put things like nature spirits and animals and all. See the, see the frog up there? I know there's gargoyles, but that wasn't the thing that came in very early Christianity in Ireland. You can see how worn that is. Look how weathered that is. The Celtic spirals. See, I've never been fully. Some lots of interesting animals. And uh, the less weathering on this side. And a bit of the top is broken off. But this is from, this would be from, I think this is from like the 6th or 6th or 7th century, maybe earlier. Very, very early Christianity. It's, you see how these are called, they call, people think they're Celtic crosses, but that's really a high cross. Now 
Uh, I'm going to show you something else. Now, they call this other one, the kind of two high crosses here, but I'm going to show you another one here. It's not a high cross, it's a standing stone. This, they get this kind of, sh this kind of nonsense all the time. They, they call standing stones crosses. They, 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 they claim this is a high cross. The traffic here is terrible. They claim this is a high cross with the top moved off. It's not, it's a standing stone. I'm still on you. It's a standing stone. And uh, you can tell that the stone is, it's sandstone, it's different. And uh, it's been placed here. Now look, I don't get killed by the traffic here, but you see, it's in an alignment with, with the, the high cross and the church tower. And then straight down the Glencar Valley. Now here's, and I want to show you the round tower. This is a, a, a this this is a bollocks. This road to get across. This is the main road to Donegal. And there's a round a round tower here. All the sheep in the fields. Look at you, you gorgeous bastards. Okay. The official story is this round tower is from the 9th century. It's much older than that. Now, the door, as usual, is off ground level. This is something they can never, they can never explain. I'll go around the other side where there's less, there's less traffic noise. I'm surprised the vibration of the road has wrecked this thing. The top has gone off it. If there ever was a top, there's a lot of things that were in tops. Now, the main contention that these were built by Christians and not by, not by pagans in veneration of the Crom Cruach, the worm of Crom, as the Christians called them, is this mortar. This lime mortar is, is Roman. It's a, it's a mixture of uh, some, uh, lime, sand with some seashells in it here. You can see bits of seashells from the beach over there behind me. And uh, cow's blood that act as a plasticizer to make it sticky and then a bit of muck from the ground and lime and water and, and, and hay and hay is uh, not hay, uh, uh, horse hair but usually in Ireland bull's hair, uh, cow hair to add as a to, to kind of add like a kind of a, like a, a fiberglass kind of reinforcing to it. Now that's the, that's this is definitely Roman mortar. We know officially well and but it will, that, that will change in years to come with the discoveries at Drumana in North County Dublin that the Romans never invaded Ireland. So the assumption was that it wasn't until St. Patrick, right, that the Christians, they, they brought this over from Europe. But they make the assumption that the Irish didn't have boats. They make the assumption that the Irish didn't sail across the seas, learn this Roman technology and bring it back home. And that's the only the only argument they have that these were built by Christians. They don't have any others. Now there's also another interesting bit of history here in this field behind me. Back in the, the 400s, I think it was, the 500s. No, 400s. There was a battle in here called the Battle of Books. In, and among one of the people involved in it was Saint Columba, who was came from Iona who had the symbolic story of him putting down his staff and picking up a crucifix and coming to Ireland to collect this manuscript. Now, that to me is symbolic of a druid. He was probably a Kuldi, and we know that the Kuldis were, were big in Sligo and in Iona, over in Scotland. And so the, a, a horrific battle took here with thousands dead. And what were they fighting over? They were fighting over a man, some manuscripts we don't know what was in those manuscripts. They have names, but I haven't been able to find them. And uh, that's a nice shot there. You can see the church behind me. See the alignments? 
it's all in line and it's just a couple of standing stones over that way and uh, yeah so like you know like what is all that about I mean there's just so much mystery to all to that period between the Christian now these windows up here you see my theory is that these are some kind of machines for foil, soil for fertilization livestock will always choose to graze near the round towers that's been noticed for years right lads the grass see he agrees the grass better here right and even on this soil here there's grass there's healthy look at this healthy grass under during a, a dry summer look at this look at that grass look at here look at the color of that and they're machines something was discovered 